Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. I've looked at a number of cheap stick welders at this point, and many of them are surely good enough for someone who just wants something cheap to do some welding, though some are better value than others. Today I wanted to talk a bit about a machine that I think is a good value if you were in a position where you don't want to spend a fortune, <coughs> Miller, but you want something that is just maybe a little bit of a step up, a little bit nicer, with a name brand and a good warranty. On the bench today is the Aesop Rogue ES-130i. It's currently around $550. For a 130 amp stick welder, that obviously doesn't sound great when you consider that there are a host of options on Amazon with 160 or 200 amps of output for under $200. So let's take a closer look at this machine, what it comes with, and why I think it's actually a good value. This is a dual voltage machine with 90 amps of output on 120 volts and 130 amps of output on 240 volts. That's not super impressive and it's a shame that with all the price increases in the last few years, this machine is actually as expensive as the 180 amp version was when it first released several years ago. But 90 amps is enough to run 332nd electrodes just fine, which is enough for a lot of projects. And since this machine has power factor correction, the amp draw when maxed out on 120 volts is very reasonable. It should run fine on household circuits, it should work well with long extension cords, and it should be very generator friendly. So even at just 90 amps of output, this should be a very handy and capable machine on 120 volts. On 240 volts, the output maxes out at 130 amps. This too seems disappointingly low, but it is enough to run a 1 8 inch 7018 or most other 1 8 inch rods. So even though relatively low output is probably the biggest downside to this machine, it also probably won't be much of a limitation for most use cases. Along with the lower output though, comes a distinctly non-industrial duty cycle of 25% when maxed out on either voltage. Again, this should be totally fine for most users, even pros who need a machine for smaller projects, but it would have been nice to see a higher duty cycle. This might seem like a poor start, but it gets better from here. The machine itself is robust and well put together. It definitely has a better build quality and fit and finish than most of the machines I look at. The cooling fan is a bit loud, but it is temperature controlled, so it doesn't run all the time. The included accessories are a step up from what comes with cheaper machines. The power cord is very good quality and it is 10 feet long, which is longer than most. Add the 2 foot long 120 volt adapter and you can get 12 feet from a 120 volt outlet with this machine without even grabbing an extension cord. The welding cables are nearly 10 feet long as well. They are on the thin side, but they have copper conductors and quality insulation. The work clamp is stamped steel, but it's more robust than the clamps that come with most cheaper machines. The electrode holder is clearly one of Tuiko's cheaper models, but it's decent quality. Overall, the included accessories should hold up well, and I can't imagine you'd ever need to swap them out unless you wanted longer cables. Another reason to consider a machine like this, or at least to feel more comfortable about spending more, is the fact that these machines are backed by a three-year warranty. There are two welding shops within reasonable driving distance of me that sell these machines and are willing to help with warranty issues should they arise. I like knowing that not only does the machine have a warranty, but in the event of a problem, I won't have to pay to ship the machine around the world and hope for the best. In terms of features and operation, it is a fairly simple machine, but it does have adjustable hot start, adjustable arc force, and a connector for remote amperage control. It also has a 6010 mode, and it has a lift start TIG mode. In TIG mode, the max output is actually 130 amps on both 240 volts and 120 volts. It doesn't have a built-in gas solenoid or high frequency start, but it can work with a foot pedal, so it's a relatively capable TIG machine as long as your project can be done on 130 amps or less. In terms of performance, it runs really nice on all the rods I've tried, including 6010. Starts are easy, the arc is smooth, and with the default arc force and hot start settings, it runs anything I throw at it. Both arc force and hot start can be adjusted though, and they can be adjusted up or down from the default if you prefer a smoother or more aggressive arc, or if you prefer a softer or stronger hot start. All in all, performance wise, this welder is excellent. Obviously, you can definitely spend less. I've tested a lot of cheap machines that work okay, and I have a Hone 
185 that I'll be reviewing next. But if you are looking for something a bit nicer without spending crazy money, <coughs> Miller, I think the ESOB 130 is worth consideration. It's a relatively low-priced, name-brand machine with a good warranty and great performance. In fact, I think it's probably the best budget name-brand machine out there. I definitely prefer it over the Miller Thunderbolt 160 or 210. Those units have higher output, but I'm betting the majority of users would benefit far more from the smoother arc, easier arc starts, power factor correction, better 6010 performance, and lift start TIG capabilities of this ESOB. Granted, if you actually need to run rods larger than one eighth of an inch, then some other welder would make more sense for you. But otherwise, I'd pick the ESOB. It's a good machine and definitely worth a look. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.